it was a it was there was a paint shop it was like an independent paint shop in west no baron's court area and Fibbles i don't know whose idea it was but we had this girl that used to hang out with us as well i don't want to say her name she used to turn she she basically that old i think it might have even been her idea because she was a proper oh, scumbag yeah already, i rate man. her but she was a proper scumbag and she was quite fit as well yeah and she knew it so she wore like a low cut top she made printed out this fake thing on a computer i think at school or at the library or something went into this paint spray paint shop with a clipboard and told these guys that she works for children in need the TV show, which was big at the time. Yeah. yeah. And she said, we're painting, we're getting all these graffiti rides to paint all these trucks that are all going to be sending supplies to Africa. Yeah. Mm. Or, or wherever it was. Yeah. What <laughs> a your story. Yeah. Jesus. So she the killer killer podcast. Killer killer official .com. <laughs> You need the television app. 24 seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK frontline. Yo, Nolan Poland records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast live and direct. Central London or as central as you need to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Believe that. Not unless you're on the platform of my guests that I'm sitting next to. Hold tight, pirate.com. 24-7 music, podcasts and dance studios all across the UK. Hold tight, strangestation.co.uk. Big shout out to nolpolarecords.com. All affiliates, you know the deal. Television, sport and art app available right now for all of your street culture needs. You know what we do. Free download, iPhone, Android people for all the mixes and the podcasts and the mini docs and the docs and everything. All right. Inside the house, we are fucking lucky. We're in a very really good place right now. You're very, very lucky. Very, very lucky. We have two graffiti dons combined with a new podcast that is just on its fourth episode this week. Not to mention MCing every sort of diverse versatility in all street culture. Elements, all the, all elements. the elements, baby. Yeah, time it is. It's Demon Amber. What's arms up? House what's in up? Your what's up? House. Arms house in your mum's house. <laughs> Such a good name. It's fucking Such a good name. Such With, a good right, name. Right. So for those of you who are just stepping into this, this godforsaken arena of podcasting, Amber Dean of a new podcast called Arm, Arms House from Your Mom's House. Arms, arms house, house to, to your, your mom's, mom's house. Arms House to Your Mom's House. Stand corrected yes. as the presenter. I will tell you this categorically. I have not heard it yet, and I'm very keen to get into the nuts and bolts. Before we get into the graph, let's talk about the. New New podcast. Yes. Talk about it. Yeah, so it's Arms House to Your Mum's House, spelt the English way, M-U-M-S. It's very important. Um, Key. Yeah, Arms House. <laughs> it's on, available on every good podcast app, Spotify, and also if you want to watch us, you can see us on our YouTube channel. Everything is under Arms House to Your Mum's House. I love the fucking name. We, even, we, we go in on it. We basically decide on the name of the podcast on the first episode. So you can hear us talk about how we came up with it. Um, I think the phrase I first heard it on a, on it was a grime song. I think the rapper's name was Demon, mm -hmm. and it was on the Pow remix. Mm -hmm. Lethal Bizzle. I bring yeah. arms house to your mom's house. Yeah. You wanna bring some beef? I bring some beef. You lose some teeth. teeth. That one. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think check that if you haven't checked. I don't want yeah. to lock you behind, but go check it. <laughs> I think that's the first time I heard it, but that was you know in the lexicon and definitely in West London back in the. Uh, early 2000s, maybe late 90s. Was it? But we were, I think something like, maybe maybe early 2000s. 2000s. Yeah, maybe it wasn't a 90s I'm sure thing. people were saying arms house, your mum's house before that though. Or just the arms house part, yeah. at least. He's going to bring arms house. Yeah, and yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of something that Kano would say. Even yeah. In a, of that era. Yeah. But you know, like house parties, like we can't bring them because they'll bring arms house. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? One of those ones, like, I, th I swear I remember it. I was very that. mindful of, Getting you guys in for this particular reason, the arms mm. house aspect of it. What's this? What's this podcast about? Well, okay, I, I did want to say that the, the name is more. If you listen to episode one, you'll see us discussing this. But um, 
we don't want to bring beef. We're not bringing arms to people. <laughs> it's just a catchy name that will stand out. And it's an old, like, it will bring some sort of nostalgia. If yeah. people who know that, that phrase, people who don't know it will just go, what the hell does that mean? And mm. hopefully it will interest them. Mm. But people who know, especially growing up in London, uh, it will bring that nostalgic thing. Because on the podcast, a lot of what we talk about, we're not restricted to anything, but a lot of it is talking about back in the day, about growing up in London in the Nine 90s. Is- uh, graph. You know, the graph, how it's changed from then to now. Music, how it's Hip-hop. changed from then to now. The making of music, the listening of and music. And our crazy uh, stories as well, mm, you know, because we yeah. we went to the same school. I was kicked out of like four or five different schools just being a just being a dickhead. We went to a school for the for a long time together. Yeah, I managed yeah. to stay in by the skin, the of, skin my of his teeth. teeth. You know, one of them ones. <gasps> After like this uh, this gun incident that he, that we talk about on the first episode, it gun was a, inc- so so there is this arms house gun. thing. It was there is a, a bit of arms house, and we do diss people. I'm not I'm not going too moist on the non arms house. There is yeah. a bit of arms house. Yeah, got to bring I'll tell a bit you of what, arms. Keller, to, to, uh, just to be honest, man, just to put it on front street, and I want to say thank you so much for bringing us on. Oh, here, bless you. You're a legend, of course, man. There has been Love. so many legends sat in these chairs. I don't know if we're worthy, mm-hmm. but they were just keeping the warm for us. The, all, the, all the heads out there, mm-hmm. man. Um, I put teach in DDS, mate. I don't but know we did we did bring you up because because you you obviously. The spotlight is on the guest and mm. it's like an interview format mm. for us we will have guests on we've mm. had one guest on so far we had my brother which I'll, I'll talk about in a sec and we're planning on having guests but it's more a conversational yeah thing. Mm-hmm. and uh, but because of course you do interviews so it's all about the subject that you're talking to and you want to draw as much out of them as possible so of course you are nice <laughs> You know, get the fuck out the way. But, you know we, what I mean? but we were like, we even brought, like, we were thinking about you. We were like, no, nah, he's too nice, man. We need someone like, like it was back in the nineties. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm like, really not some yeah. raw shit. I'm with you. I'm with you. My nineties were overly consumed with uh, uh, just geeking out on beatbox. You know what I mean? It's like, of course, you, it's, it's people are often say, how did you get so good? You know, even now people are like, how did you get so good? I'm like, bro, like, I literally did nothing. Yeah, just, I was a geek in that. Just yeah. beatboxing. It's yeah. all a fucking... We have must have done some events together. I'm sure I've done... The back in the back in the day, mm. we've been on the same flyer. Did you ever do, like, the jump off? Do you remember yeah, the, jump did the jump off? You did that. Yeah. Golden era. That's where we must have first kind of... Met. Those events were wild. Well, they had everything. Everything. Yeah. They, throw they up did battle, have everything, didn't they? Yeah, they had, the yeah, they had yeah. dance battles yeah, and dance shit. Booty shaking and shit. Booty shaking yeah. battles. They we had. talked about this on the Ten Tube podcast, and it's it's actually uncanny that that actually epitomizes the whole street culture of um, yeah. the, the, the the athleticism and the value of that. You know, was Ten Tube there yeah. as well? Yeah, because I won that. I won the jump off the MC on. battle. Do and um, do you remember what you was that? I've got it written in one of my lyric books, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got home and I was like, won the battle, da, 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 wrote it on the page, you know what I mean? But, I yeah. love you did that, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, what you have to remember it because I've got like lyric book, piles of lyric book. I remember it's in a red one, so I mm. could dig it out and have a Do look. Do you remember who you battled that day? Yeah, oh man, that was well bad. Back in the days, it was this Chinese guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So instantly, like the noodles and like the, the casual racism kind of battle oh, bars God, came yeah, out yeah, and yeah, everyone sad. went mental and <laughs> loved it, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I bodied him and it was two weeks before uh, Pro Green came on the scene. Because oh, wow. then when he came on the scene, yeah. I was at a military school at the time, so I was like not allowed to be... I had to like go back. Damn. Because I was so naughty. My dad always said, you're going to military school, you're going to military school. He never did. But then the, the <laughs> ultimate school I got kicked out of, he's like, right, you're going back Pushed your luck, young man. That, yeah, that <laughs> was <going>. it. <laughs> but it was a threat that never came through. So I was like, oh, yeah, he's always chatting shit about that. It's never going to happen. And then, bam. I won all that shit. <laughs> Hip hop was just taking. I was doing all the deal, real record stuff mm-hmm. back in the day. Come on, Doc my Brown, guy. Harry Love, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, man. Reveal and Tony D and everyone was down Big there. Big up them poisonous poets. Yeah, yeah man. And then, oh. uh, and then my dad's like, nah, boom, shove me back, shove me into this this military school. And then bang, this pro green guy came on the scene, mm. and he did like eight weeks yeah. or something, eight weeks like straight. Changed the whole shit. Yeah. Changed all of that shit. And just wow. and just bodied everyone for so long. I never got to battle him or anything. I battled him outside Carnaby Street once. Oh yeah, oh. I remember him dissing my Reebok Classics. Yeah, that's all I can remember about it. Pro Green, I, 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 there was something real stand out about him. I think a lot of it was just his brazen. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, and maybe like kind of the voice as well. Like, yeah. yeah, no, he projected well. From yeah. what I remember, because uh, obviously I wasn't there at that time, but I was watching it online. You of know, course, when, it was, yeah. when it would upload on YouTube. 
Um, I'm pretty sure he was yeah. freestyling. Do you remember the yeah. MCs had to wear the black chalkboard yeah, yeah, around yeah, the yeah, neck yeah. and it's kind of like yeah. swinging and he yeah, came yeah, like yeah, properly baggy garmed out and stuff yeah. like that. It was the attention to detail yeah. from the jump off that I really admired, you know. What yeah. happened to them, man? I don't know. I don't they, know. Kept, they kind of went on for quite a while. Yeah. I think they developed into some other thing. I got, I got invited to do... Um, Earl's Court, uh, Earl's Court Main Arena oh for the God. Prince's Trust. That, that was hooked up with the jump off. Like because was that, you was that the sorry to cut you? Was that the one with Jay Z and Jay Z and Kanye? Yeah, yeah, and they were the judges. Mm, that's mad. Yeah, I taught him how to build Yeezys and everything, man. It was massive, but that's how he got famous. Can I grab a tissue just to blow my nose. Yeah, go and get a man. tissue, man. Go and get a tissue. It's, just, it's, it's all good. Um, it's the beauty of having two guests, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, jump off, man. I miss that shit. Cause shit, the Jay-Z and Kanye were yeah. the judges, man. I remember rapping against this guy called Art, who Rocky. Yeah. Tall black guy in a red Arsenal shirt. Kept on mentioning Arsenal bars. <laughs> and I was rapping against him, and I looked up in Earl's Court. Is that eight forty thousand? Whatever there is there, S- seismic. And I just see me on all these different screens, and I'm like, "Fucking, I'm making yeah, it, man! Yeah, I'm yeah. fucking gonna make it, man!" You know what I mean? I'm thinking, "Shit, this is it." Boy. And all kind of before the phone was on regular loot, used to show everyone what you're doing all the yeah, time. Yeah, just um, wasn't that time. And I it? couldn't show anyone. There was no Instagram. There was no. We're really showing our age here now. Yeah, yeah. Shit. yeah. Well, that's what our podcast does a lot. Like I said, you know, we were always harking back to. Uh, back in the day. I don't like calling it the good old days because, you know, there's good things and there's bad things. Back back in my day. You know, we try not to. I mean, we had my brother on as a guest on episode four, which drops tomorrow. tomorrow. Well, I don't Uh, know. So it'll be, yeah, the day after. This will be this, yeah. Mm. Every Wednesday we drop new episodes and, uh, um, what was I going to say? What were we talking well, about? The, the, the concept your, of... Your the, brother was yeah. about to diss us for saying back in oh, the yeah, day. Oh, yeah, because back in the day, exactly. Yeah, yeah, because he kept saying, like, oh, we always talk about back in the day, back in my day, back in my day. So we're going to... You know, I like doing it, but I always kind of push back because I don't want to be that old dude just going, oh, everything was better back but in the day. But all of our stories you know are I mean? back in the day and we don't really do anything <laughs> anymore. It's just back in the day. But no, the we more... got plenty. We got plenty to talk about. Yeah, mm. and I think the more you do a podcast, certainly the case with the episodes I've done is, like, the more you do them, innit? The, the more you refine what your, 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 um, your subject matter your is. Your niche, mm. like yeah, trying to niche pinpoint is. that shit. You've yeah. got to start. You start somewhere, get nowhere. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, also, yeah. it's dangerous to, to, to get your parameters too narrow as well, you mm. know, because you want to keep it open yeah. so in the future you have more to talk about. You yeah. know, you're not limited to one specific thing. Mm. Um yeah, so we, you know, so we, we, oh yeah, our next guest is going to be my cousin. He's a stand-up comedian out in USA. Nice. He's, he lives out. He used to live in New York. Now he lives in um, Washington. Washington D.C. and he's a proper joker. So we're going to be filming that soon. So and then we're going to talk about the relationship between you know U.S. and and U.K. Mm. when it comes to music and also because he's a stand-up comedian. The theme here mm-hmm. is a budding stand-up comedian. Mm. He's done yeah. a few gigs. It's been a while since you've done a gig. now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but I've seen you live a couple of times. Dude is mad talented. September, I think it was in Camden. Yeah, but you've got to get more gonna stage time. You're going to start doing more, yeah. You've got to do more and more stage time because that's the only way. Treating that's... it like it's rap battle though, mm. man. You know what I mean? Just like going in on yeah. there. That's Similar sick. to rap battle, you can't really practice that stuff at home. You can get better. Yeah. You can work on it and like work the muscle, but... Until you're in front of a crowd, yeah. Yeah. you don't really know if what you're doing is so good or bad. True. It's so funny that's self-promoting yourself for comedy as well, because you're like, yo, let me put me down on the list. They're like, will you get nervous? Yeah. Have you done any shit in front of people? Do you know, <laughs> bitch, put my name down on the list. Put my fucking name down. <laughs> that was put the my one name thing. down on the list. Because <laughs> there are many skills you need to be a stand-up comedian. I think from your emceeing past, especially from your battling past, is that um, you know performing to a crowd is, is yeah. the easy part. That's the easy you know? part. Yeah, yeah. Well, which, some people which, hate that part. That's the hardest. Some people part hate that part. For most people, yeah, that's the hardest part for most people. Mm, very true. Yeah, um, yeah I've had. Uh, I've had a number of people come on before, podcast-wise, that have done stuff mm. inclusive with the whole the whole culture of it all. Um, the likes of Daz, F24, Big Up Dad. Mm-hmm. Um, Daz, the likes man. of Blade, 521, Big, Big Up, up Dad. Blade, even all the time. Even Sipa with the... With the oh, yeah, the, uh, chatting shit podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a story about Sipa. Go on. Um, we all have a Sipa story on here. Back. In I'm, the day. I'm talking... <laughs> <laughs> no, 10 years... No, I don't know. I think 2012. Yeah. So this is when people just do nothing. They only had a YouTube show. 
This is before they got the BBC deal. Yeah. We were all obsessed with that shit. When we all found it, I think it was on a, on a YouTube channel called Waste Man TV yeah, Brent, or something Brentford like that. Yeah, Brentford Drive through McDonald's. And because we, we recognised, obviously, Brentford Estate, so all me and my mates were loving it. And at the time, I was, I was organising... Uh, warehouse parties in Acton. Nice. I think you might have came that to one sick. at one point. It was in mm. North Acton. And then we used to do it next to the graveyard up in Labra Grove, but then we moved. West London uh, Warehouse Little Nat used to really come all the time. Guys. Salute little Nat. I remember this one. I remember because Nat, could, did she have a birthday party there one Maybe, time? Maybe, yeah. That and was, um, we, that. Uh, Rodney P came, fun. Rodney P and Skits, they, yeah. and Rodney P's birthday we did there. Anyway, so Chess and uh, Farmer came on to Monday. Ch- no, not Farmer, just Chess. Just Chess. Sick. And uh, we had Nikki Black Mark. We had a whole bunch of people, and it was just a small three hundred oh, capacity so spot. Yeah, I remember and, uh, it very well. And so, boom, we were obsessed with that show, and then we were just like, I, I just thought to myself, man, let me see if they actually know how to DJ and stuff. Let me try and get in touch with them. And it turned out one of my friends, Candy. Big up Candy, oh, another Candy. Coffee. Have you had her on here? No. She's in Newcastle now, right? I think yeah. she is up yeah. north. Big up yeah. Candy all day. Salute Candy. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, she went to school with Hugo, who's beat. Yes. So she got me in touch with him. And so I messaged him and I said, look, I do a party. Oh, I want shit. you guys to come in character and yeah, just yeah. MC and Stop perform. Stop it. So it's just the prototype, almost like beginning off. So he put me in touch with Steve, Steve Stamp, who's mm-hmm. the main, the guy who writes, you know, the, the main brain, guy behind yeah, yeah, yeah. it. And then he said, well... If I remember correctly, again, I can't remember every detail of what was said, but he said, look, we, we don't really know, but we'll make it happen and we'll come. And they, they told me the price it would cost. It was really cheap. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. now I'm sure they're, you know, yeah, yeah. next level. Seismic. But, uh, but this was, obviously, they'd never done it live in front of an audience before. And so I was like, look, if you, Chabadi... And this was before he was Grinder. He was uh, Sniper. Sniper, that's right. He was right. Sniper, I think he got... You know, anyway... <laughs> And he and he was uh, a sick beat. MC back in the and, day. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, who else? Oh, yeah, Mish came as well. I think her and Steve were going out at the time. I'm not sure. Anyway, they all came in character. They stayed the whole night. They had a fucking wicked time. It was rammed. Yeah. That's when I knew. I was like, right, these guys are onto something. And when they came, when I was chatting to them, uh, Steve told me, he goes, yeah, we got a BBC deal. It's coming. We're going to be on BBC soon. They were all mad excited about the whole BBC thing. So it was before they had a BBC and deal. The rest is all history. And uh, oh. yeah, now they're winning fucking yeah. mad awards. awards. Was that the Chav theme? theme? Was it Chav theme? The, it was the, yeah, but I suggested, because every warehouse party we did, there was a theme to the party. And I, I encouraged people to dress up. You didn't have to dress up, but, you know, I encouraged all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that theme, I was, I said to them, oh, we'll do a chav theme, yeah. And then I remember Steve saying, oh, we don't like the word chav, mm-hmm. you know, it's a bit of a bad word. And I was like, okay, fair enough. And he was like, call it the pirate radio theme. So we, we did a pirate radio theme, basically. Love it. And uh, I think, who else played that night? My man Bozak, uh, Liskey, uh, Cy Courage, and Mr. Shiver from like Size Doesn't them. Matter. Mm-hmm. All the crew there, man. And then them lot came, they all smashed it. It was... Uh, Incredible. I went to I'll Bush Market what. and bought all like the fake Louis Vuitton bandana yeah, yeah. and stuff yes. and all that shit. It was brilliant, man. <laughs> Mandatory. Yeah. Cap, had a Kappa tattoo on my neck and shit. Love and it. We, we made a video of that day. And I tell you what, if you go follow us at Arms House to Your Mum's House Pod mm-hmm. on Instagram, get it. I'll upload it onto the Instagram so you can Ooh. check it out. This is an exclusive video of That's these huge. boys. Before, before this the... is their first ever stage time they ever did live on stage was this at is my warehouse. This fucking rare. Man. Mm. It's just, I don't know, an idea came to me. I thought, let me reach out to them. You never know. She's never known. Those parties, though, man, full of DJs, full of writers, full of rappers, full of, like, anyone who Mm. was, like, anyone in any kind of underground scene. They were sick. Yeah. We even had one of the guys from Aswad turn up. (laughs) Well, they're locals. They're in the West, aren't they? Yeah. And and also, Charlie, what's his... What's his bloody name? The guy, the actor from my sister, because my sister, I have a sister who's a session singer. Lovely. And she's done songs with DJ Crust and with uh, Asian Dub Foundation and a whole bunch of people. Come on. Uh, big up Flute Box. You've had Flute Box. Yeah, uh, Nathan. Nathan. Big up Nathan. Yes, Nathan my people. Yes, yes. And, um, um, oh, fucking hell, what was I trying to, was I trying uh, to You were talking out? about, uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, um, the old sister. Yeah, yeah, I know. What was session I relating musician? to? Yeah. 
getting her on, bringing down people like Assad and... <laughs> oh my God, I smoke weed. Doesn't even smoke weed, weed anymore. Do you, do you <laughs> no, no, still I, smoke I, weed? Mate, you drunk a bit of this. Something. I was relating her to... Yeah, I've got whiskey in here as well. It's not just yeah, 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 whiskey in a uh, jar. <laughs> I, I was relating her to something to the West London Warehouse Party. Was I can't remember, man. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, but I'm the, sorry, guys. The point being <laughs> is you characters are 360 degrees hip-hop street culture. And it sounds like it comes from DNA. Now, a lot of mm. people on intro who don't know a lot about this mm. will know you very much for the graph. Yeah. Um, Dean, yeah. Amber, names recognised across London for a long time. I mean, definitely West London. I didn't... Yeah, really... and New York and Los Angeles <laughs> and Paris <laughs> Nouveau de Ile, you know, everywhere, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, personally, I mean, I don't want to... Thank you, though, but but uh, I don't want to big up myself too much, man. I was West London. That's what I concentrated on. Yeah, that's why yeah. I got this warped um, perspective yeah. that yeah. Yeah, you probably, but you were. <laughs> we, we, we did venture out a bunch yeah. of times. I want to big up Zelo. I want to big up Simrock, big mm. up uh, Jose, big up a whole bunch of heads in there. Insa. And, um, I might just say this much as well, is mm. when I told people that you're coming on, mm. they all smiled every time. <laughs> they know you guys and... They know you as nice guys. They know you as the, the dudes. Nice the nice guys. Funny guys. The funny well, guys. I had a bit, we had a bit of a reputation back in the day, even yeah. before, because uh, SDF crew was the crew I, I, I mainly ran with and I still represent it to this day. But before that, I was I came up with uh, my best mate, who's my best mate to this day, Frez. Mm. Fresidente. Fresidente. CMS. Come on, son. Cool moves. Yeah. Crazy mob stars. <laughs> Yeah, well, that these, was the group we the started. Sick of... Frez, you never put me in, man. And I'm still asking every day. What's that like now? 30 years I've been asking to be in CMS. I think one time... Now I... he's on a podcast yeah. asking, yeah. get it in. Put no, me... but CMS ain't about anymore. I, I think might have got a slap. CMS I might have got a slap from nah. someone for sticking nah. up CMS, I think. Nah. Maybe. I mean, cool moves. Those. But that's the oh, thing. Back in those name, days, man. the early, early days, we, we, we felt a need to have a certain reputation, you mm. know? So like we were, you know bit boisterous and mm. a bit uh running rampant you know it was me and frez and spo and mm. um big up spo big yeah up, big spo. Spo. i mean i'd say get him on here but i don't know you know he's he's he he holds his cards close to his chest yeah you know? yeah that trust that? me trust <laughs> me it isn't for the world of trying he's the general man he is the general he's four, three, nine. Nine. that's the Heavy. crew we sort of rep now is but the three, early nine. days i'll tell you one thing as well i'll tell you yeah. one thing about spo he used to write i mean i hope he doesn't mind me saying this back before he wrote spo he used to write oops Wow. This is Hanwell. This is when we was like, I'm talking early 90s. Wow, right? now there's some intel for you. That's we used incredible. to see oops everywhere. And I, I don't know what happened. Maybe he got in trouble, whatever, because we didn't know him that well at this time. Then he, he just switched, swapped the route, word around. Nice. So oops became Spo. Oh my God. See? <laughs> see, now there's some real yeah. intel. I love that. It was Spo and no Bozo idea. for a long time, wasn't Spo it? Spo and Court. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Court. Rest in peace, yes. Um, yeah, and Bozo, yeah, yeah. But he was writing Puto. Yeah, then. Puto. So Puto. Puto. Um, yeah. Yeah, used to man. write Puto. Uh, so just, oh, it brings back, it's, isn't it mad that how names bring back so, uh, almost like memories of a time? Like, see, when you yeah. say Spo, Bozo, all that, the, I'm, I'm, all I can see is like kind of Ealing, Acton, <laughs> Bush, <laughs> trains and rooftops yeah, and yeah. track sides. Yeah. When yeah, you man. say those kind of names, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. And Puto in particular, there was one dub that he did. It was massive, huge P U T O with space between each letter mm. on the on the overground. Just by uh, I think it was West Ealing Station. I never forget it. Like just as a just because he was older than us, obviously. So mm. we used to just sit there as young kids, man. Just. You know, smoking zoots, looking through the, the I fence. I wonder how he done it. Going, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Like, so you know, man. The neck just going left and right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, copying it in our books and stuff, you know, just, uh, yeah, just wanting to get involved in it, man, one way or another. Mm. Man, when, Fib when said we something it. really cool on his podcast, which mm. I, I kind of, I, I've paraphrased a couple of times on others, but it still holds true in my head. Is when, when you're, you don't even need to be a writer to feel immersed in a scene you feel like you're blocked just by seeing the piece. Yeah, if you just go to school on the underground, mm. in the there and back, you know, you're kind of seeing this gallery all the time. You know where every spot is, yeah. and if mm. someone's gonna, if there's a new piece, mm. it's like a massive thing when you yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that new fucking piece? Oh my god, we're going back. We're gonna sit. Yeah, you see everything normal, yeah. normal, normal. Yeah. What yeah. the fuck is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and you had to actually catch that train and go there to see it. 
mm. you know, unless someone had a photo. But usually from the train, like, you know, you're going to get some blurry ass photo, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But now we've got the slow mo that you can take <coughs> like screenshots from, which is, exactly. which is a new phenomenon. <clears throat> yeah, riding the lines oh, is, was like, a massive part for me. That was a massive part because even if you weren't writing, mm. you could still go and ride the lines. Because yeah. you'll have to do like Barons Court, West Kent, Earls Court, Hammersmith, mm. see all those different mm. ledges there. Mm. Then you have like all Don and Nerve and Emaze and all mm. that, like, like yeah. in Kew York, like Richmond, Kew, Gunnersbury. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then you'd have, you know what I mean, like North, North, Northwest, like around here. Mm. You know what I mean? It's mm. like everywhere, but you'd have to go out. And see it. See it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could maybe go to that graph shop in Camden. I can't remember what it was called. He used to sell graphitisms and shit up For there. such a normal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. mate, that was the spot. But I, I was and lucky someone enough. Someone tell you something there. I had quite a few friends who didn't even paint. They just used to take photos of graph. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, this is, I'm talking like 92, 93. Wow. Yeah. And they have like, I've got a whole, I was going to bring some just for you to check, but oh I thought, ah, oh, there's a whole bunch out there. I don't know. He's got really time. old diet, really old boasts. Just all from that era from like, uh, yeah, 92 well, to like, 94, mm, 95. Those pit. years, I've got like three shoe boxes full Stop of just hits. Because they don't, you know, they're all, you know, they've moved on now. So yeah. I'm like, let me have a. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. God, yeah. That's incredible. And I was chatting actually, you brought up Daz. Because uh, mm. um, he, I was chatting to him because I went on his podcast. This was a few years ago, and we were talking about archiving graffiti. Mm -hmm. And he said he doesn't like people archiving it on Instagram because these companies are owned by you know Facebook mm -hmm. and all these things. We should have our own thing, yeah. you know, rather than putting on these things. And I completely agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, I agree. Things are changing. Things that's the change. stuff that you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, I appreciate you know, that, brother. No, no, weird, we weird. We I, I, I found a. Uh, it's called Book App. And mm. Nuzo got it to me, I, I, um, told me about it. I'm not sure if you've seen this shit, but it's an app on your phone mm. that f once a month you can get a free book. You just get the, you, you get your pictures, you put them in the book, and they oh, really? print it and send it to you. Oh, yeah, what, for I've free? Heard about for this. free. You have wow. a set number of pages. for free. Yeah, bro. You have a set number, one, one free a month. You get a set number of pages, and if you want more, you just pay 20 pay pence. a bit, yeah. whatever, but you can yeah. still get the free one every... Oh, Hard back. Hey, that's <laughs> good, man. Ain't that something crazy? <laughs> I mean, it is yeah. about defining your own, um, I, I, I guess, because not everyone wants a book, but it's all about having platforms that are, you know... Owned and run owned, by yeah. people from right. the culture, That's or at right. least... Well, even, f even forget about possible. that, like, for yourself, you know what I mean? When you're mm. 75, mm. you can sit back and open some hard book copies thing. of all these things... To, you're like, listen, grandkids, you lot of pussies. Look what we used to do. We used to do you know what I mean? This. All the, bah, 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 bah. Granddad used to be a fucking rubber. You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. Well, mate, I mean, now, like, graffiti, when, like, when we were starting, it was already relatively established around the world. But, like, you know, now it's even more deeply ingrained. You can't pick up a, 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 go a McDonald's. sweetie packet. You McDonald's. can't go McDonald's. You yeah. can't go anywhere now without seeing uh, something taken from that culture, you know? Yeah. And someone making money off it or, or whatever. HSBC. Off the aesthetic mm. of that. When you catch a, get an aeroplane and you're going and there's those HSBC adverts down Gatwick and Luton and shit. Yeah. They're just covered in, like, graph. They've yeah. taken graph from somewhere. That's right. Yeah. I was thinking, holy shit. Yeah, exactly. So, so, We've so been nicked for graph a million times. Culturally but, but these mother lovers, now. yeah, just taking it. But I'm saying, so this early documentation of these early things that in graph, because it was only mainly graffiti writers or friends of graffiti mm. writers that were documenting it at the time, that shit is going to... I'm not, I don't want to put a price tag. I don't want to say it's worth money, but it's worth so much. There was, just a, there was a website. You know, it's the roots it's of called. all this stuff. And mm. no matter where it goes in the future, that stuff is always going to be important. And that kind of leads back to our podcast and, and also when I make music, because I still make music the traditional way. Mm. Not because I don't like new technology. I don't shun It is a bit. You don't really like new technology. No, I do. Yeah. It's more laziness. I can't be bothered to learn that shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, there really. is that. Because I've, cool, yeah. I've learned that stuff. I'm going to do it that way. And I like the way it sounds. So if it's not broke, don't try to fix it, in, yeah, my, in my opinion. And I look at it as a way, I mean, I've mentioned this on our podcast as well, a way of like uh, uh, conserving those methods mm. that have been lost now. Because you don't, I mean, you don't have to get an old drum machine from the 80s and sample or from vinyl. And mm. you know what I mean? Like I can, t I know for a young kid coming up, one that's n not accessible, not as accessible, mm. you need, you know, so I, I love the technology now. A kid who's creative can let his creative juices flow just mm. you, as long as he has a phone. You know mm. what I mean? Like he doesn't need anything else, just an app on his phone. And that's beautiful. But it's we need 
people still to preserve that original, traditional, not original, traditional, traditional ways. Yes, whether right. it's graffiti, whether it's making beats, whether it's yeah. emceeing, whether it's whatever. I mean, I, I think so, it's I guess important. some of it is tuning into where the kids are. And I know what you mean about social platforms, it's like they do own the rights to it. Mm. But what ultimately happens is you remove yourself from that, then you alienate. When the kids are on TikTok, then you've got to get the culture to them. Yeah. It's unfortunate that that they don't see the kids don't see the dominance of these platforms and what they actually do do to to the people that are content creators. <laughs>